There it is. There it is. Hey! <laughs> Hello and welcome to session number 48 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi, everyone. Woo Hello. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> welcome back. I hope you have all rested and you have rested your voices and you're feeling better. I know you aren't feeling the best, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I shall eradicate disease someday. Yep. That's a good goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no sure. Okay, it's on you. it's on record now. That's my objective. Oh god. You've pledged it. Yeah. Uh maybe if I <laughs> Alright everyone, just fund my Twitch channel. That's how we will fund my cure for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. Let's jump right in, shall we? You have been... Uh, Austin, you have been dodging your recap responsibility for a few sessions now. But... Sniff, sniff. It's time. It's you time. You gotta do it. Ah, sorry, everybody. Nothing special today. No comic book, no song. Just a... Dramatic reading of my you notes. Sad music. <laughs> you sad music. <laughs> Please play the violin. <laughs> Siri, play Despacito. I can't. I'll get a copyright strike. <laughs> so, uh, last session, we were taken hostage by a group of Krelko. Uh, these well, uh, well armored, well equipped. Um, crystalline creatures um, who uh, were especially suspicious and perhaps even frightened of Tekka. They surrounded us with an ashen powder and uh, they told Tekka to stay inside of it and not cross the line. Um, and so we managed to talk them down from killing us at the very least um, and they agreed to take us to speak to the mothers. Uh, so they separated us and took everyone but Tekka to go and speak to the mothers. But when Pip tried to cross the border of Ash, they discovered that Squeak could not pass that line. And so Pip had to poof him away. And so we, we uh, walked up the stairs and we spoke to the mothers. Uh, these three uh, uh, matriarch figures that spoke to us. Uh, and... They said that they would give us shelter and a dwelling to stay while they deliberated on uh, what was to happen to us, having found their their place. Uh, they, they said they haven't had anyone come in a long time, and they didn't want anyone to come for a long time. Um, and they, uh, they told us not to touch anything at all. Um... But they did say that they would search for the eggs of the shield vultures, which was nice. In the meantime, they took Tekka to a small shack. Uh, they, they laid out powder on both sides of him, making a path for him to, to the shack, where he met another tiefling named Leshkri. Uh, and she, she called Tekka uh, a devil and claimed that he and she were both devils and she said that everyone claims that if she were to ever leave this place the whole cave would flood and everyone would die uh, devils being a bad omen seemed to clarify a bit as it began to rain through the opening in the cavern top um, but we learned a little bit about uh, Leshkri we learned that her mother is Maravesk one of the one of the mothers of the uh the clan here, and that her father's name is Potrakash. And she said that mother doesn't visit often, but her father does. Um, and it just seemed that she was kept prisoner there for some reason. Uh, Tekka found his belief that he is not a devil challenged, as his hand was burned from trying to leave the circle of ash surrounding the dwelling and Pontifex magically identified the ash as targeting specifically fiends, but kept this information secret so as not to upset Tekka. 
Um, later we learn that uh, a person named Kalvig mixes together the ashes with diamond dust and uh, creates it in that way. Um, and so, so now it's begun to rain and we are, we are awaiting our fate. Have I missed anything important? Um, your group is, has just come back from investigating a potential exit from the cave, uh, which is the place that Orm, your, your book, remembers uh, uh, having entered mm-hmm. this cave system to begin with through. Um, so have you, you mm-hmm. have just the checked that. The guards seem to not want us to go any further. Mm-hmm. They know. Um... Yeah, you've been followed everywhere by, by Tarsha, the one person who uh, is able to speak as unfair and has been talking to the Bamiya. Um, and he has been keeping an eye on you and making sure that you don't go uh, too far. I'm just looking at where you're actually going at, at, any, at any point. Um, but yeah, that's it. That was, uh, it was wonderful. Thank you for the recap. Uh, here is your inspiration die. I'm going to put it here. Did I have a bad anyone? habit of not using mine. <laughs> you can keep up to two. Up to two. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Is that not what we've blessings. been doing? Yes, that is. Oh, it's we, we do it differently on Thursdays. <laughs> you only get one oh. on Thursdays. Yeah, Fridays. Oh, wow. Whatever. <laughs> That's why. How do you get the Bardikins? Oh, I know why. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell them that you're treating them worse than you treat us. Black you have daddy. to work harder. <laughs> and that, w- whatever. That, shut up. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. I can't pause the music. It's a fine. It's all good. We're all good. Um... We're going to take a look at how Tekka is doing. Uh, still separated from the rest of the group, uh, trapped uh, behind a circle of ashes and diamond dust. Uh, stuck with a girl who has a very drastically different idea of what the two of them are. Uh, the initial excitement that Leshkri showed at meeting someone somewhat like her has uh, uh, dampened over time. Uh, by now she seems a little frustrated by his uh, denial of what he is, uh, and she has found that the two of them don't really have that much in common. Um, that, uh, after the party left uh, to investigate the area and uh, make sure that they have some kind of way out. She has uh, um, gone into a separate room for a moment. Then she has returned with a bowl and she sort of just pushed it into Tekka's hands uh, without much of a word. And then she retreated back into the, uh, the room full of books where Tekka had originally seen her. Uh, Tekka, the, the bowl is filled with uh, some kind of cream. Uh, it feels cool to the touch, and it it soothes your, your burning head. Thank you, Leshkri. She doesn't acknowledge the, the thank you. <laughs> Just, like, on her way towards the, the, the other room. I think Tekka will follow her into the book room after applying uh, the cream. Has this happened before? Have you tried crossing the ashes? Yeah. Yeah. Many times. Um, she will 
roll up the sleeve on one of her arms. Um, you can see that her forearms are uh, covered in a very thin uh, layer of brown fur, just like the uh, the end of her legs are. Uh, but you can see in the fur uh, what would seem to be just old uh, burn scars. Uh, some places are a little matted, the word of her hasn't regrown uh, fully, after what you can imagine have been many attempts uh, to leave this place. It is a terrible feeling. Was any time different? Or was it the same very sensation every time? I've never even gotten close to making it through. It's not just painful, it's... It's like I'm hitting a wall. It is a rejection. You know, I... I'm... Fine... In here. I get everything I want. It's... Not so bad, but... <sighs> there is this idea in my head. I could go anywhere. You know? Uh, I'm a Ledathe. Which means I can access the world of the living and, and the world of the dreaming. And I'm part devil, which means I can enter the sea. And I'm a Kralka, which means I'm also part of dragon. I could go in the sky, I could go in the sea, I could go anywhere. And I'm just here. I'm this perfect being. I can't do shit. I... Who told you you are a devil? The mirrors do. Do you not have eyes? Were you not a child once? I was born like this. My, my parents told me, everyone told me, devils tell me every night. What's there to doubt? People told you you were a devil. Do you feel like a devil? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Every fiber of my being. I don't hate it. I love it. I want to unleash my powers. I, I want to show people what I can do. I want to punish them for what they've done to me. And one day, when, when they die, I will be the judge of their souls. I can't wait for that. Why the need to punish? Because people are bad? I mean, look what they've done to me. Look what they've done to you. Don't you want to hurt them back? Maybe trap them somewhere where they can't escape? That's the whole point of devils. We pay them back. We make them go through the things that they have inflicted on others. That's how we cleanse them, their souls. So in your mind, this village is the whole world. But, but it's all I know. Yet these books tell you there are more things beyond this village. Yet you've decided this village represents all. I... You talk in a very annoying manner. Just get to the point. 
I do not think you enjoy the feeling of being a devil. You enjoy the feeling of being Leshkri. Those are different. She crosses her arms. You can see her just thinking deeply. A few seconds later, she shifts out of that position. She runs one uh, finger over the edge of her horns, all the way back to the tip. And then back, as if reminding herself uh, uh, of what physically she is. I don't get it. That is fine. It took me many years to bring me where I am now. You will be there too one day. Again, she Can looks I... thoughtful for a moment, but she doesn't really seem to, to, to get to any particular conclusion. Leskri, can I tell you a story? One from the surface. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, is Leskri seated in that one place in the... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And then I think Tekka will, again, just sort of seat himself on the ground and look at her. This is a tale from my town. Please think it through the next few days. Badger had their hole in the ground, where they held that they had found. Then one morning, Badger saw minks, and in their mouth such beautiful things. Badger left their hole in the ground away from these treasures they have found. Through the clearing, Badger followed Minx, so they could have those beautiful things. Badger threw Minx to the ground to take the treasures they had found. But when it was evening, Badger had no Minx to follow, so Badger could not be home at their burrow. Please think it through. We will talk again later. And with that, Tekka gets up to his feet and walks out of the room, leaving behind the bowl of cream. Hey. Um, can I please mm -hmm. have a persuasion check from Tekka at advantage? Okay. That was very nice, yeah. by the way. Thank you. It's out of character. <clears throat> 11, got it. Uh, Tekka leaves behind uh, a a thoughtful Leshkri. Um, her expression at the beginning of the tale. Back to uh, having lost the excitement of, a, of hearing a tale again. Uh, and instead kind of annoyed. Uh, and then Alfie, through her curiosity, kind of kind of picked... And then ultimately silent, uh, ah, thinking over the lesson attack I was trying to impart. In the meanwhile, the rest of the party, um, the four of you, the Vamia, and uh, Tarsho, having returned from your little expedition back into the sparkling village of Narashk. Uh, the torchlight, uh, uh, in what seems to be the, the approaching night, uh, uh, is shining and reflecting off of so many surfaces that the entire cave almost looks like the, the night sky itself. It's curious, it's bizarre, it's almost unbelievable. The trees themselves, rather than the idea that it could have grown 
out of gemstone material is so strange to you that it's easier to imagine that they had merely been sculpted by uh, enormous quartzes and whatnot. Uh, uh, you see kids running around, playing, being called back to their homes for, for dinner. Uh, the majority of them uh, avoiding you as you return, but you spot one looking at you and not getting out of your way quite yet. Uh, he's hi halfway hiding behind one of the really tall, really slim mushrooms that dot uh, this landscape. Uh, his eyes, uh, his gaze in particular seems to pause on Pontifex and then on the Vamian and back on Pontifex. Uh, the, the curiosity but also hesitation uh, in his eyes is very clear. And then he takes a little step to the side, coming out of the cover of the mushroom just a little bit, silently judging your reaction at him being this close to you. Close being a good 20 feet away. Do you do anything? I don't think so. I think he might actually just approach the guy. Uh, Tarsha? Yeah. Sure thing. This isn't the this isn't the one that's been following us, is it? Or is this the is this the same guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's okay, the one who has been speaking as unfair to, to earlier, the Vanya. Or uh -huh. talked at. Okay. <laughs> You kind of have to talk to him through Devamia, but he, he's the one who's been following you around. Uh, I think you weren't here for his description, but like the the major um, major thing about him is that he's kind of covered in dirt. Um, he has dirt under his fingernails and around his boots. Um, so you figure he, he might have been like some kind of farmer or some similar. Uh, he might have some kind of uh, some similar job. Uh, I have some questions for this man. I don't know if anyone has already talked to you about this, but uh, all of this stuff about uh, the water is coming and flooding everything and the end of the world and some such, if, uh, if these devils get out. Uh, who did you hear this from? Devamia translates to, uh, to Tarshun and back from him, uh, um, as she says. Okay, well, um, he says that uh, everyone knows it. And then there is a little bit more of an exchange and she says, Well, getting more details out of him is actually kind of not the easiest, but um, he says that the... The traditions and the, the knowledge of the past of the village, they are, uh, they are protected and they are, uh, spread by the mothers. Mm -hmm. Uh, generally, omens of the future and warnings about the past, uh, they come from the priests. And that's all I'm getting out of him. The priests are the mothers, or is this a separate group? He says that uh, the priest, uh, the current one, is a man, Kalvik. We saw him earlier. Uh, hmm. The mothers are not priests. Only men can be priests. I see. And, uh... Is there any doubts about the mother who supposedly gave birth to this world-ending devil? Is this, um, like, okay with you all, you know? The conversation between the two of them actually takes a little bit. Uh, like, they have a lot of back and forths between, before sure. Devamia uh, translates back and says, Ah, uh, 
right? He's not being very straightforward with me, I don't think. He's kind of dancing around the subject, but the way I see it, based on how he's kind of avoiding it, uh, it sounds like the mothers have a lot of respect and people don't really speak ill of them. But I can totally tell that there is definitely some some doubts about her. Hmm. Well, if these people are somewhat sensible, then that makes sense. It is not like a, a blind faith. This is good. Uh, just feel like there is perhaps a wrong that needs to be righted even if it unleashes that woman upon the world. <laughs> and, you know, it will also benefit Eka, I guess. <clears throat> so did I get that right? That the priest is getting the visions? The but... priest is the ones who talk about the omens of the futures and such, so I would presume that even if everyone knows about this demon world ending thing, it is the priest that continues to pass it on through the ages, so. Might need more of a direct talking to. Yeah. That's good to know, though. Huh? Curious what sort of magics he's doing, where he learned it and such. While we wait to speak to the mothers, of course. So do you think we can just go to the priest now, or do we all at once? Or are they, or us is the priest currently discussing with the mothers? It is probably best to not involve the mothers at the time. Especially though, well, the one who gave birth to the devil girl. Brooke, um... Ever attentive to your surroundings, I uh, you notice some movement directly next to you, away from the group, and you immediately bring your attention downward the right uh, as the kid reaches for one of your wrists and touches your skin, one of your hands. I'll just look at him and let him touch it looks back up at you. His eyes are big and they're the same color as the green uh, gemstones that adorn his, his face. He takes one of your fingers in, in his hand and the, the size difference between your hands and his is uh, ridiculous. Seems very curious. He touches your clothes, your sleeve. It makes eye contact again. Um, then there is a voice off in the distance, um, a, a female voice uh, shouting something, and uh, um, the kid kind of jumps and runs off. Do I see the, where the voice, or do I see the person the voice came from? Uh, it came from one of the buildings. Okay. It sounded but like he is being called back home. Yeah. I look to Devamia. Can you ask him who that was? Um. But, well. Tarsha says that uh, that kid's name is Eshko. One of my cats is on the shelves and he's throwing stuff on the ground. If you're wondering what that sound was, here's the name. Eshko. Okay. Here, let I me. Guess. I need to get the cat. One moment. Oh, Bubbles. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. I think Brooke just looks at his own hand. Then looks at the others. I can see why he's surprised. 
They do look kind of weird. Especially in this place, I guess. Uh, the Vamya says, Power sure does keep calling us smooth skins. Smooth skins. Huh. It's endearing, I think. It's just a natural curiosity. <laughs> oh, can you, you know imagine? It takes for them to be smooth skin is someone to remove the box. Ah, and then but... they would have little holes in their skin, like me. Professor, <laughs> do you think we will write about this? About Narashk? Let the world know? Be famous? Eh. Uh... It is good to chronicle things, but not all information should be shared for the sole purpose of fame. I believe this needs to be shared with the proper people, and the public at large is very rarely the proper people. Uh, then who would be the, the proper people? Uh, proper scholars, uh, those looking into... You know, truly what it is to be Illidari and, and the new people, the cultural exchange, just not like resource mining companies. I actually Maybe agree. Not, uh, jewelers on account of these people having a place comprised out of gems. I don't know, I feel like it could incite greed and that could incite lots of death. They also don't really seem like they want to be <coughs> found. So. Right, if humans <coughs> were to come here in mass, it would likely result in a lot of death. And I'm not sure which side would win. Probably neither. <laughs> eh, I disagree. We do have the rules in place where we shouldn't take anything from beyond the peninsula, and people have been pretty good about following it. We didn't come to Ladari to take over the continent. Really? Really? Oh. We're building railways. The gnomes are becoming more militant by the day. All it takes is one bad interaction to give someone an excuse to go west, and they will. You are a pessimistic bunch. I live All right, the then. War. I was about to say, how old are you again, Deformia? Well, you shouldn't ask the age of a woman, but... No, I know, I get it, I get it. I didn't, I didn't live through the war, so I don't know what I'm talking about. That's all right. I'll keep this to myself. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's it not too bad. Passive aggressive. No, no, no. I'm afraid I's gonna know, of course. Uh, of course. And murder claw. We don't keep secrets from murder claw. <laughs> and I don't believe that murder claw is much of a gossip, so. <laughs> Uh, no. No, he's not. He's too shy. <laughs> I'm going to this the reason. <laughs> uh, by now you have reached the main bridge that leads up to the to the floating gemstone. Um, I'm assuming you're, wake, you're making your way back. I should ask, actually. Where are you going? <laughs> Great. Where have we been? <laughs> I'm assuming maybe to find this priest. That's why I asked earlier if he, if he was like with the mothers currently discussing our fate. Oh, is he? I don't know. Uh, Devamia will it. ask for you and... Uh, um, let me just double check something. Tarsha says that that is our... Um, even if the mothers were had something to discuss, they would have gone their separate ways. Uh, so it's 
it's likely that you'll see them tomorrow. Um, and similarly, the priest will not be in their company at this hour. That's good. Then let's go to the priest. We should find this priest. Okay. Um, so actually, the place where Tarsha would take you uh, is on the opposite side of the village compared to um, where Taka is being held uh, in this area over here. Uh, you are on the lowest point of this valley. Um, and there are the, the amount of buildings built this low are actually, um, is actually uh, lower than everywhere else. Uh, and this, these seem to be the ones that have been built specifically to be more accessible. You find a lot of older people living in this section of the village. Um, and then you find a lot of color and a lot of plants. Plants that actually are uh, somewhat similar to the ones you are more familiar with. All Ladarian, of course, but uh, things that you would actually find on the surface. Uh, the nature here abandons the... Uh, all the crystalline like qualities uh, that uh, uh, most of the terrain around here has, and instead you find actual flowers, actual small trees made of wood. Um, and it's all in a pattern. Uh, like you can see patches of one kind of plant and patches of one kind of another plant. The trees are planted a very specific fixed distance from one another, like on a grid. Uh, everything here seems to have been meticulously placed uh, by someone who knew what they were doing. Um, and uh, in the in one such patch of uh, of colorful flowers uh, you find uh, what you quickly understand to be a graveyard the stones uh, um, the, the headstones here are again made of gemstones but the flowers uh, on the uh, n before them are the kinds that uh, um, you are used to seeing uh, before one such headstone, uh, you find uh, the priest Kalvik. Um, he appears to be in the middle of something. You see him sprinkle something uh, on on the ground. Uh, and then you hear his voice. Uh, um, he either oblivious to your presence yet or just ignoring you uh, as he sings. What would you like to do? Is it rude to interrupt the singing session? I mean, we can probably wait for a little bit, right? I mean, I doubt he didn't notice us on account of it being me. Devame asks Tarsha to be sure and uh, says, Yeah, yeah, we should wait. Fair enough. Uh, so Is he do. good? <laughs> <laughs> um... His brother got the pipes. <laughs> Wow, he's excellent. Uh, even though you cannot understand a word of what he's saying, uh, the the tone and the emotion very much carries across the language barrier. Um, obviously, he's uh, uh, whatever he's doing. It is for it is for the dead. Uh, but the 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 emotion that you get from his singing uh, is. Uh, Actually, kind of a kind of a pleasant one, like a like a hopeful sort of vibe. Um, it's not really mourning, but more like uh, like a farewell. You wait a few minutes for the priest to be done singing, and uh, where during that time you saw uh, a a fellow human being uh, who thinks and feels and. Uh, uh, you, you got this glimpse into a culture that also has their own relationship with death, but the moment he turns and sees you, it's like uh, that the glimpse of humanity that you saw in him is gone. Uh, and there is instead very clear hatred uh, in his eyes. Uh, he stops what he's doing, he puts away the materials that he had taken out, and uh, uh, his, his voice at this point is, is sharp 
as he addresses Tarsha and the two have a quick exchange and Devami translates and says, Okay, yeah, well, he's not happy to see us. I, obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, what should I say? Anything in particular? We're already starting off on this foot. Perhaps I shouldn't lead this one, huh? I mean, Devami will translate into a nicer tone, I guess. Well, this is going to be a mess. I'll have to translate with the Tarsha, who's going to speak his own language with Kalvik and then back through us. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to do my best, but my Azimuth fairy is a little, still a little rusty, you know, guys? I mean, yeah, I guess fair. we could just cut at the point and not waste any of this man's time. I don't think he wants us to waste time. You could ask him. Well, introduce us if he doesn't know. Well, he knows us already, but you can he introduce seems to us know again. Us. Yeah. And then just ask our curiosities on. Well, the curse, if. Or what happens if the devils get free? What is up with the water? Get a little conversation going. See what his view on it is. <laughs> on account of traveling with. A person similar to her. I feel okay. like we are somewhat experienced in this conversation. This uh, translation telephone uh, begins to take place. Uh, the the Vamya seems to uh, have lost her usual energy, uh, and she's very cautious uh, um, with the words that she picks and. Uh, uh, getting simple concepts across through multiple languages is taking a while. Uh, and I need everybody to roll an insight check, pretty please. Inside, inside. Nice. Mm-hmm. We are rolls. Just need pips. Working on it. Oh, uh, do you want me to roll for Felix as well? Oh, uh, yeah. What? what are these rolls? Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your secrets! <laughs> <laughs> no subtext shall go unnoticed in our <laughs> presence. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, all right, and I am not ruling like you guys are, so... Um, Unless it was on the singing check. <laughs> <laughs> While, of course, there... Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, well, of course, there is, like, nothing you can get from the actual conversation taking place. Uh, all you have left is just body language. Um, and it's... It's subtle. Each of you kind of picks up on it at a different time, but uh, for one reason or another, one quick glance from Kalvik, one um, movement of his foot as it turns, it kind of gives a bit of a cold shoulder towards one of you. You're kind of beginning to notice that as the conversation is taking place, uh, he is particularly wary of Pip, always glancing in his direction, always making uh, checking what he's doing. The smallest one in your party seems to be the person that, at the moment, he's the most concerned with. Wait, who is? The priest? Yes, Kalvik towards Pip. Hmm, okay. Um, Devami eventually returns with a translation and says, Okay, alright, so I'm kind of getting the things that we already knew. Um, it it sounds like uh, uh, this guy, but also just a Kralko in general, uh, specialize in defensive, uh, protective, guarding magic. And uh, they are very good at it. And they know to um, stop threats before any danger danger actually befalls their village um and he says that just as he has dealt with cloud fallen the, the dragon um 
He has also dealt with the devil and he said he will deal with any other devils that decide to show up. Um, something about Owens. I didn't fully get that part, but he listed off a few things that happened that uh, um, are, were signs that bad things were coming. And so he had been preparing himself. Uh, and they mentioned that the, their Ezen has died, and that was one of the omens. Um... And, uh, ooh, I, I, I think that's all I've got so far. Huh. There isn't died. How? This ex exchange between them, he doesn't even get to Kalvik. Uh, it seems that the answer is provided by Tarshal first. Uh, and then the Vamit translates back. Um, the, uh, um, okay. Uh, how do I translate this? Um, he, he said it the normal way. Right. Age. It's just when their time comes, they go. It's not much of an omen if it was predictable. But it does, it's not predictable. It can happen any time. Remember? It, it didn't sound like the omen was that Oh, he died on this specific day. It was just that he died, and if his time was coming, the normal way is usually fairly predictable. I don't know. That seems off. But fine. Therese died. Therefore, the world will end if the girl gets out. I don't. I don't see the connection. Where does he see these omens? Where does he read them from? The deity? A bit more back and forth. Devamia, kind of under her breath, not really. The word Zeus says, oh. Oh, they were friends. Okay. And there's a bit more back and forth again. Um, and finally, she properly turns it to you and says, um, yeah. He, uh, so the, the priest says that uh, all omens are divinely inspired and sent by the dragons. Um, and he's always talking about two of them. And I tried to checking and kind of getting weird answers, but I'm pretty sure he's talking about Muriel and Kirio. Right. So these Kroko have some sort of a deeper connection with the dragons. What about uh, uh, my dear friend, the lord of this guy? <laughs> uh, what, what do you want me to ask? Um, what should I say? If they know the name? Sure, if they if know If he him. talks to them? If they know where he's going to be. Okay, yeah, I can ask that. And, uh, ah. No, it, it sounds like the only dragons they actually care about are just those two. They, they don't have any relation with any of the others. Mm. Um, right, so, I guess another thing to get to the point what would it take for us to just leave here with our friend and forget that any of this ever happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'm pretty sure Tarsha is being very nice in his translation. I, I get the feeling he, that the Kalvik isn't being as um, kind with his words as Tarsha is, but um, uh, he's just saying that it's up to the mothers. So he has no influence in it? Not that he's telling me. Hmm. And what if we don't agree with the mother's decision? He says when the that time comes. the judgment of the mothers is um it cannot be defied. Interesting. Right. Are we gonna ask him? He can't, he can't understand us, right? 
and I look at the priest to see if there is any sign of him potentially understanding us. Uh, roll another inside check. Oh. I think he can. He answered a question before it got to him earlier. <laughs> Wait, did he actually? Yeah. Oh. Um, Rook, you don't pick up on any particular reaction from Kalvik uh, to your words. Okay. I'll trust Pipso. Alright. Then do we have any more questions? Just feel like the question that we came here for wasn't quite... I guess definitively answered of why is it that they believe the world ends if she leaves, if any tiefling leaves? Or why they believe they are so bad in the first place? Could try asking again. Because depending on the answer, it might just tell us that the mothers aren't actually thinking about what to do with Tekka, but what to do with us. In which case, we might be able to get the jump on this. Vamya cautiously. <clears throat> um, translates at least part of what you're saying. You feel like she's trying to word it in the, um, in the best way possible. And eventually what she gets back to you is... All... Uh, all he's saying is that devils are devils. And so what they say about them and what they do, it, it is simply what they are. And it is simply what they do. And what is it that they do? Make rain? And they harm people. Well, that doesn't necessarily add up. I feel like Tekka is the last person to harm someone in this group. I do like Tekka. Also, are there any instances or examples of flesh creep <laughs> harming anyone? Oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Me too. <laughs> Harsho says that it's never happened. Because Kalvik <coughs> prevented it. Prevented it with uh, dust? By locking a wrap, yeah. Well, it hasn't happened with us either, and we have done nothing to prevent Tekka from doing anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, guys, overall, really love how the place looks, but I'm not liking the people. I mean, I don't disagree that the lady is a problem. But I don't think it's because she is a tiefling. <laughs> I'm sure that ample bad things would happen should you let her out of that house. But again, I don't think it has anything to do with being a tiefling and has everything to do with her being a problem. Uh, oh, okay. Of well, making, of course. Kalvik is leaving. Ah. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, as, as the mommy is saying that, you do see the priest uh, um, begin to move away from you, kind of around you, and then towards the village. Bye. But it kind of went okay. I thought he would try to stab us with a silver knife. <laughs> Not that he could have. I would have kicked his ass. And then we would have all died if we kicked his ass. Well, <laughs> Is that I'm another not sure. rule? Maybe we just only have to deal with people who see it. And one of is just gonna play inside the guy. He does what? One of just like says we just have to basically kill every witness. And then oh. we'll get our little guide. <laughs> <laughs> no survivors, right, friend? You wouldn't rat us out. You wouldn't make me roast you like a kebab. <laughs> Or she just awkwardly smiles, having no idea what you're saying. 
See, look hmm. at him. He wouldn't tell us all. Did you see him look at Pip, by the way? I, I noticed you noticing him noticing Pip. Okay. Yeah, that was a little creepy. You think maybe he knows is down there? Pip just looks with his eyes down at the shawl. Unless he also wants to touch your skin, like the kid earlier. Seems like an area of his expertise is fiends in particular, and there is much fiendishness about you. But you're about not me. locked up in the house, so he's not totally sure. Do you think they're any closer to coming to a decision? I just want to get Tekka, get the eggs, and get out of here. At this point, I could take or leave the eggs. Hey, no, we can't. We came all this way just to get them. No, they said they would find the eggs. Think are... about the mama. Aha, uh -huh. and these what people if you who were live a in mama these bird? caves are better at finding the eggs than us. We could just delegate it to them. They have problems with us, not the birds. What, what if they lock them up and say, no, birds are bad luck. If they leave, the <laughs> tornado will come. <laughs> then what would you have us do? Uh, Do you have a slaughter a whole village <laughs> and a pair of birds? Pip thinks about it. Hmm? Alex seems to not want to do that. Sorry, Alex, I can't hear you. <laughs> birds, Alex. You would rather not think do that. Think about the birds. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Pip. <laughs> I don't know. I like me some birds, but that I'd seems a little harsh. <laughs> rather not kill everyone in the village. <laughs> um, back to Tekka. Um, is there something you want to do in the in the house while you're on your own, and uh, uh you you have left Leshkri to run devices? I've been trying to think of things, but I don't think there's anything noteworthy that we need to show on screen. That's all right. You're like yeah. poking around, looking at things. Uh, um, yeah. You've uh, you quickly come to understand how, like, the fact that this house is made of wood is actually a sign of uh, luxury. Uh, having wooden furniture instead of gemstone—that's uh, you. You can almost imagine the conversation where. Uh, Lesh could demand that only the best and most expensive, and she was given exactly what she wanted. Um, but despite the, the size of the building, and despite uh, uh, how uh, she she has gotten all the best things of all the highest quality, uh, there is this solitude, this sense of loneliness that it, it's almost as if it has seeped into the walls. It's you can't imagine growing growing up. Uh, uh, your whole life uh, within the same four walls. Um, and as you're feeling this, this sense of oppression of a really strange prison, the, the front door opens. Uh, someone takes a step in and immediately pauses, uh, uh, making eye contact with you. Uh, a Krelko, a, a man uh, with long brown hair that has multiple different braids. Uh, um, and he, he has locks that are diamond-like, uh, kind of clear in color. Uh, he he looks um, older than you, than you, perhaps twice your age. Uh, he's carrying this basket uh, uh, in his arms. Uh, he's only with, with one arm, and he uh, he's holding the door open with the other, and uh, he's just kind of frozen in this in this position, looking. And then he smiles, a bit awkwardly, but he feels sincere. He says something to you, but it, you cannot understand it. Uh, and he comes in and closes the door behind him. Tekka will point himself and say, Tekka, 
and then point to him. He um, places the basket on the table and points at himself with his now free hand and says, Otrakash. Then he adds something, but you're not sure what it is. I do not understand. And Tekka will point towards the book room. Uh, he nods in understanding and uh, uh, shouts something, but at this point you understand, he shouts for Leshkri's name. Um, moments later, she comes out of the room, uh, actually at uh, quite a pace. Um, comes over and uh, gives him a hug. And then the two of them have a brief conversation, uh, and you can see her pointing at you, and then he also looking your way, and you feel like you're being talked about. Uh, um, and then, but then, uh, after a, a short exchange like this, uh, Leshkri, almost as if remembering to actually address you, uh, she says, right, uh, right, okay, Tekka, uh, this is my dad. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say. He brought food? He says you can have it. I, I see. Please thank him for me. Uh, Potrokash nods as uh, Leshkri translates. He wants to know if you need anything. Hmm. I want answers to questions. Um, he says he can make the time. Why is Leshkri held here? Um, Tekadi, uh, it's very clear. Uh, Potrokash's expression darkens a little bit. Uh, um, two of them have a, have a short exchange. Uh, Leshkri just sort of glares at you and says, ah, don't you already know? Okay, fine, fine, fine. And I talk again, and then she says, right, so, um, I really don't know what you're expecting me to tell you that you don't already know, but I am a devil, this is my house, I do not get to leave it. The village agrees on this. I, <sighs> dad doesn't agree. But, but he's the only one. Can you ask why he is the only one? Oh. That doesn't want it is for me. Does he believe you can run free without endangering anyone else? You really want me to ask to ask him that? I mean, you really think he would say anything else to my face? Would you believe that? I want his answer. Okay. All right. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I think I can I have an inside check from you now? Yep. There isn't much of a change in uh, Potrokash's expression. The the whole conversation, you can tell that this is a, a hurt father trying to do his best for his daughter. Um, moments later, <clears throat> uh, Lashkri says, he, well, he says that He says that he doesn't believe that I would do, that I would cause any harm. I it's believe silly. both. I always tell him 
the things I would do to the village if I was let out. He doesn't think I'm serious. Please tell him this. I believe both I and Leshkri should not be held here. Have you considered an escape? You see Leshkri hesitates before speaking to him. Um, and at this point, he begins to look a little nervous. He looks around at the entrance door, at the open windows. His uh, answer to her is quick, brief, uh, which she translates as, uh, well, that says that he hasn't. He says he can't go against the mothers. Then what are we to do? Dad says that he prays that things will get better. And he feels like they are about to. Why what does that will mean? things <laughs> and like she before you even get that, like she, she's asking him this, so like you understand that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the wh whatever he's telling her she seems disappointed by it and she seems to be like pushing a little bit harder um, and then th the, the conversation seems to sour a little bit uh, and then she, she's crossing her arms and just puffing out her cheeks and says okay fine well dad isn't really being very straightforward with me but I've been hearing this kind of stuff all my life that that he doesn't think that this is permanent. That, that things are going to change, maybe eventually. But like, y you know what's so upsetting, Tekka? He could just kick those ashes away. If he really thought that I could get out of here. He, he could just do it right now, and he never does. You know why? Because, because he's a coward. It would go against the mothers. I don't think he actually believes it. That I, that I can be set free and everything will be fine. Does I tell him? And he says he doesn't believe me, but I think he does. I think he's afraid of me. And you know what? I think he's ashamed of me too. Then why would he come here day after day? Because he has to. Somebody has to bring me food. Your mother seems to have the, not this need. Your She's father... a mother. She doesn't have to do anything. She can just tell people to do things for her. Like like me. Um, Portrokash having been suddenly left out of the conversation and hearing that Leshkri is like, raising her voice. Uh, um, you, you, you hear him trying to interject, but she's kind of ignoring him at this point. Your father has something to say. I don't care. I'm gonna get my food and go back to reading. And uh, she begins to do so. Unpacks the things that were in the in the chest that he has brought on the table. Mm -hmm. The only word that, that you understand from Poltrakash is whenever he says Leshkri's name. Uh, and by now it's obvious that she's just not answering to it anymore. Uh, Tekka will approach Leshkri. I will let you use this mask. If you speak to your father now. 
Roll a persuasion check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Try to... like that idea. <laughs> the oh. game does not. The game <laughs> does not. <sighs> <laughs> the game does not. There's nope. like... the brief moment... where her, her eyes light up a little and... You, you do see that she considers it. But then she seems too upset. Uh, and brushes you off and marches down the hallway and slams the door behind her. You and Potrakash are just left in awkward silence. Yeah. Scratches one of his arms, looks at you. Um... His expression is kind of apologetic. At least it's nice to be in the presence of a Krelko who doesn't look at you like you're a monster. But whatever he's thinking about and however he actually feels about the situation, it's just uh, beyond uh, your understanding. He awkwardly reaches for one of your shoulders and sort of like puts a hand on it and you're not really sure what he's trying to communicate, but he, he makes eye contact and uh, he looks a little sad. And uh, he begins to clean up, takes some of the plates that uh, have been emptied at some point during the day and some empty containers and he looks ready to head off. I think Tekka will take out something from his bag, uh, and it's an hourglass. Uh, he points to the door that Lashkri slams shut, and then flips the hourglass for Voltergrass to see. Um... What kind of hourglass is it? Like, how long does it take for the sun to go from one end to the other? It says, hmm, it says standards. I must, it must be an hour, I suppose. Ha! It actually doesn't say, ha! <laughs> what counts as a standard hourglass? I mean, isn't it in the name? Our <laughs> glass? I'd assume so. Okay. Not a minute glass. Or a short rest glass. <laughs> <laughs> One second short glass, glass, flip glass. it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a long um, rest glass. Alright, so... It's kind of a, like a, a bigger one. Um, hmm. Yeah, he... He pauses, he looks... Seem trying to get some meaning out of what you're saying, and he seems to settle on something. He nods. And then he begins to leave. To leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Pekka just remains and probably just... Uh, did Leshkri take the... Uh, take what... Poltrakash brought into the room? Some or? of it. Okay. Then I think Tegel will just look over what remains. Yeah. Um, again, right. more of this kind of alien food, but it's it's freshly prepared into a warm meal. Uh, there's multiple parts to it. Yeah, Tegel will probably just pick at one of the side dishes. Uh... Try to learn what it actually is or what it could be made of. <laughs> uh, so spend some time doing that. Yeah. Um, and if if you want, there is food at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Um, back to the party then. What is what is their plan? I guess our options is to either blast our way out of here. Go and smudge the ash floor and leave, or await the decision tomorrow. Mm. 
we had found a way out, right? The arm? Well, according to Orm, that is how he got in, and they didn't seem to want us to go any further that way, so... I would presume that there's another way out. And this perhaps how people here uh, go outside of the village without having to deal with Cloudfallen and all of those creatures. And the other problem is that the entrance is probably... At least from the sound of it, we never checked, but... Fallen in, right? I remember that right? Right, the one that we came in through. Mm hmm. So, so that is our only way out. Do you think we should check at night? Check out the way out, just to make sure that it's actually a way out? Okay. And we don't try to escape? Maybe and then. Squeak could do so, I think. Leaving it up to chance is a little risky, but uh, invisibility yeah. seems to fix that. So maybe our local devil friend could look for us. I think we should definitely do that and then talk to Tekka and tell him what's up, what we think. And then make a decision whether we leave today or <coughs> await there. Well, final words. My only concern is if uh, this cleric is as powerful of a spellcaster as I believe him to be, given the ward. Uh, scrying magic isn't low, but it definitely isn't a miracle. And of all of the places to have a scrying spell, uh, perhaps the devil house is the one. So... I suppose I am a little... I mean, if we speak in our own tongues, it is more difficult for them, but... Uh, I am still hesitant to talk about this in that house. Could probably send in... Hmm. I mean... I don't know, Tekka is not really... the person who just goes with any decision we make. Right, well, I mean, conveniently, I am telepathic, so I can just speak to his head, but uh, it is not a two-way street. The other way we could do is send Squeak in Invisible as well, and let him talk to him. I suppose I could just put the plan forth and... You know, make it in forms of simple yes or no head nod questions. That is actually easy. probably the best idea. Okay, let's do this. Just, you know, caution and all of that. Alright, so Squeak is gonna explore our way out. And we go yes. to Tekka and talk to him. Well, you know what I mean. And the rest of you try to rest up as much as possible in case things go poorly. In fact, if they make a decision early, perhaps it will not wait for the morning. They could come in the night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see how it is. I'm just being voluntold what to do. Not even a party of the discussion. I don't have a choice in the matter. I'm you just your point. little slave. Well, do you not I want to do it? to hear an alternative plan. Perhaps well, there's an angle look, I'm not thinking about. We're talking about these people who put down these these ashes that burn any devil that tries to pass through it. I try and explore that cave. What if they have a line of that ash down? Boom, poof, dead. But you know <laughs> what? For you, I'll do it. I think dead is a bit of a stretch, but uh, I guess keep it. Dead! Kablooey! <laughs> I blow up again. You know, it doesn't feel good when I blow up. You know? Right. I'm not I'm not just dispensable. I don't even know if I'm the same person when I come back. It's like well, that. I mean, look, Squeak, if this is too much for you, I could just ask the cat. She seems to have free reign of the place. She could just do it in your stead. Uh. 
Mm. You know, if, if, <laughs> you know if, if you want, we could just like delegate all of your uses to the cat instead. Could just like replace you for this sort of thing. Oh, oh, hmm. I know I'll do it. You kidding me? Sure no, no they... trouble. I mean, she's a cat. She's, she doesn't need the invisibility. She, she could smell invisibility, so maybe she, she can't can even... replace me. No one can replace me. She can't do the things that I do. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe replace was a bad word. Just, uh, you know, you do this, you have risk. She does this, she has no risk. It is like, uh, like slight improvement. Oh. <laughs> But who am I to say no to a man's bravery? Yes. Brave. I will go. You really your don't cat have to. can just sit pretty. Because that's all it's good for. All right, I'm out. Whoosh. <laughs> right then, so okay. that problem is dealt with. If you were like this with all the women... They'd be swooning all over you. That was well done. Gaslighting women. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you phrase it that way, sure. Oh goodness. I feel like perhaps you might have worse luck with them than me, Brooke. Given that outlook. It looks like but... Tarsho is asking questions to the Bamia, uh, and uh, um. The Vamia begins to have a conversation with him, and then, like, in the middle of it, she quickly says to you guys, Yeah, he's really trying to figure out what you guys are talking about, so I'll, I'm just making shit up. Is that okay? Sure. Does he want to meet the cat? Uh, the, should I tell him about the cat? Wait, what cat? Have I seen the cat? You have seen the cat. This one the time? The cat is what found you. Oh, yeah, I did see the cat. The last few days have been insane. You know, calling it the cat is getting tedious. I don't know why you're calling it the cat. What's the cat's name? I don't know. Well, I haven't asked it yet. I generally you name. Oh, sorry. I, I need to talk to. <laughs> I need to talk to Tarsha. Fine, she just drops he'll, it. He'll, he'll call the cat. Here, you no, have fun. Make up something, something about the cat. Here's someone in the cat? Yeah. He someone in the chest? Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> whatever the Tressin was up to in whatever plane he had returned, uh, she had returned, she seems a little upset that she's been interrupted. It's like summoned like on the floor, but she's like on her back. Like, yeah. in, like, like <laughs> there's something dangling above her that she was having a great time <laughs> with, and now it's just gone, and it's she just gone. looks perplexed. What happened? He trusts him just slowly stands up and stretches and sits down and looks at you. Right, here's your story, Devamia, where I was talking about the cat. Devamia resumes talking to him. Uh, Tarsho seems terrified at the appearance of the Tresim. Oh, this will be good. <laughs> Potifex is going to use his mage hand, his six-fingered mage hand, to pick up the cat by the scrub, <laughs> like, crane it over to him. <laughs> she she meows very annoyedly, and he uh, he's, like, trying to step away from her. But, like, well, hold on. Yeah, no, no, no. He, wa he wants nothing to do with her. Ah. <laughs> uh. You can tell Devam is encouraging him to pick her up, but he's just, he's doing like the universal gesture for no, just shaking his hands in front of him. Um, this delightful scene is interrupted by, by a guard, um, who approaches, again, maybe 30 feet away from you and calls out, uh, um, something and Harsha replies back and then, uh, at first he, he just says something and then uh, after the second exchange he, he uh, he suddenly pauses. He's like completely forgetting about a cat. He's going to uh, 
take a few steps towards the guard, there's a bit of an exchange again. Uh, and then Tarsha faces the Vamya uh, and tells her something, and the Vamya translates back to you and says, Um, okay, they want us to go home. Great, that's what we want as well. Um, no, not, not home is in home, but home is in uh, the home they are given us here. Worth a shot. <laughs> uh, what should I tell them? Ask him if we can say good night to take After another ex exchange, she says, uh, No, they say we need to go right now. Hmm. How far away from Tega can you <laughs> do your thing? My telepathy? Yeah. Uh, uh, I have to be able to see them within 60 feet. Uh, you know okay. that you will pass in front uh, of the house where it's being held uh, to get to the main bridge that leads to the higher levels. So with the grid on, you can see the actual distance. Particularly if uh, Taka were to be outside or near this edge of the building. Well... You better give him the information quick. Uh, sure, as soon as I see him, I will just bombard him with information. <laughs> He's quick on the uptake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the plan is... Uh, well, we wait for Squeak. Yes. And if he has a secure route, then we decide, are we going to fight our way out? Or are we going to trust the mothers to make an exception for Tekka for no presumable reason and to just let us leave? Yeah, I think it will also depend on the way we have out. Right. Right, so... Okay, I can translate all of that. To oh, and Tekka. she should be ready to... just escape with us, just in case. Mm. Wait, her? Him. Take her. Right, him, of course. Not her, right? I mean, do you want to take care of her? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your answer then. <laughs> Great. Uh, begin to follow the guard. Uh, uh, Tarsho is yawning at this point, and stretching. He seems pretty much done with the day, but he's still um, with, with his uh, just keeping his eyes forcefully open. He's still leading you uh, through the village. Uh, you end up near the bridge that will take you up to the uh, to the floating gem. Ah, you're free to act upon your plan. We do. Uh, if I see Tekka, he's just gonna, <laughs> like, super summarize. Uh, we sent Squeak invisibly to look down the tunnel that is our way out. Uh, uh, wait, wait, speaking wait. to the priest. <laughs> you said you need to see him, right? Tekka? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we see him. Okay. Ah, because Tekka would be indoors at this point, but there are windows, uh, timing-wise... I mean, I'm not really in a rush. Like, if we if we need to go inside to do this, that's fine. Okay. The, 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 like the problem is that Tarsha, anyway, so. yeah, is trying to get you up this bridge. Oh. Yeah, that's why I asked if we could go by Tekka. Because they don't want us to go say goodnight to Tekka. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, I don't understand what he's asking. And I am just gonna walk. <laughs> you just walk in towards the house. Yeah, uh, no habla espanol and just walks off. <laughs> <laughs> He has a choice. He can go after me and leave the rest of the group alone, or he can stay with the rest of the group and leave me alone. Uh, the one guard chases after you. Right. Um, well, Tarsha is like in between the group and Pontifex. Um, and he's saying something and, uh, and, uh, uh Devami doesn't even have to translate. Uh, uh for you to understand and he's calling you back um, uh, no uh teka teka the guard puts a hand on one of your arms and grabs it you're like almost uh, at the circle of of ashes uh, i'm like desperately peering my head around to look through the window <coughs> can you use your and to knock on the door. You actually see Tekka. Oh! Oh. Yeah. Did I uh, say yeah, so? Okay. Um, uh, Rapidly. He, he seems to be like moving around some food on a plate. Uh, and he seems to be as perplexed by it as you might as well be. Uh, Tekka, I have no time. Uh, we sent Squeak to look down the tunnel invisibly. Uh, we'll act on it later for a way out. Uh, we are wondering if we're going to have to fight our way out in the night or wait for the mother's decision in the morning. I don't have time to get your answer, so we're just going to make a decision as a group, and then we will come and get you when it is necessary. If you want, you can stay or you can fight your way out. Bye. <laughs> 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 Take your mind is suddenly bombarded <laughs> by Pontifex's voice. Catch any of that? That's even better. <laughs> um. <coughs> Sid, <laughs> what's Take's reaction? I'll return reaction? with the group and give them a firm thumbs up. <laughs> And then Take, you basically begin Pontifex. to hear his voice, and you see through a window Pontifex being dragged away. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka is very much like a stone face, just staring at the situation happening outside. Um, and probably trying to process everything. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just kind of staring down at this meal. That is also perplexing. So there's a lot of uh, lot of sensory information to take in at once. The Pontifex Classic. Lots <laughs> of sensory information to take in at once. <laughs> Pontifex, you are return. Yeah, you have been returned to the group. You feel like you nailed it. Nailed it. Well done. Pretty good if I do say so myself. So now we just rest and wait. <laughs> we should probably listen to the guard so we don't raise any more suspicion. <coughs> Did we see any guards in front of our house earlier? Yeah. Oh. How many? Uh, you saw two. Okay. You proceed up the bridge? Yeah. Okay. I guess so. Uh, as you head up, and then on the various bridges, and you eventually reach this main platform, uh, there are another two guards here. Um, two, li like before, two on either side of the entrance to your building. There's two here uh, on this platform. Uh, each of them looking at you. The one that has been accompanying you um, stops here and even stops Tarsho. Uh, the two of them have a brief exchange and it looks like Tarsho is just letting you go ahead. Uh, but he, he looks a little perplexed. He doesn't talk to Devamia who doesn't Seem to know what's going on. Uh, 
Ask him what's up, Devamia. Quick. Uh, whoop. Okay, don't do that. Um, she speaks to him and then just says, uh, Well, he just says that he's leaving us here. <sighs> okay. Let's go inside for now. Um, you head in? The guards actually open the door for you, which they hadn't done before. Uh, the inside of your small building uh, is well lit and there is a pleasant smell uh, across the air. There is uh, food on the table, warm, freshly prepared. Uh, chairs, multiple chairs have been brought in uh, for each of you. Uh, and one of them, uh, an extra one, is occupied. Uh, you see one of the mothers gesturing at the free chairs at a table as she says, You sit down. We speak. And we're going to take she a short this break. In Plurnan? In Plurnan, yes. She's the one who spoke to you in Broken Plurnan earlier. The blue oh, okay, one? Okay. The one with the blue ox, yes. <coughs> I'm in a break. <coughs> yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. Oh, man. It's culminating. Are the birds there? The birds. They're not the food, right? The birds <coughs> that you had left here at the house earlier, they're not here. They they cooked them? You will see. They serve us a poultry dish, except the dish seems to be part of the bird. Like they a shield, cooked one them. might say. There's chicken and eggs. No. no. <laughs> Big eggs. Fried chicken make it all. They found the um, eggs. <laughs> Oh God, hey, okay. look, babe, they found the eggs. I'll see you later. No! Great, problem solved. Found the eggs. The birds aren't worried about it anymore. And we're fed. Very That's just well. in character for Pip while he's gorging himself on this strange bird meal. Waste not, want not. It's not a bird meal. It's suspiciously <laughs> like friend. No! It's like call a chicken. <laughs> okay, so uh, you stand before Meravesk, one of the three mothers, who gestures for the rest of you to sit down before this feast. Great. Hello. Is this, uh, oh. Like, how is this laid out? Like, is is she sitting at the table? Yeah. Are there chairs, like, next to her? Uh, yes. Great. That's where the professor is. <laughs> okay. The rest of you all sit down. Mm-hmm. The Vamya seems like, looks like she was absolutely starving. Uh, and after a brief moment of hesitation, she reaches for her food and looks up at Miravask, um, who, like, glances back. And after a moment, uh, she says, You need not my permission to begin eating. And the baby immediately starts. Uh, poison testing the food. Good. <laughs> for you. Uh, once everyone is seated, the mother also begins to eat. So how goes the discussions about when my friends and I get to leave? Conversations, they, they are finished. Great, so when do we leave? <laughs> well... That depends on the outcome of this conversation. What do you mean? She calmly uh, takes a sip from, from her glass. I am one of three mothers. Do I have more children than the others? 
my voice carries exactly the same weight as theirs. Since two of them want you dead, it does not matter what I think. It could matter. Legally Pip immediately speaking, stops it does not eating. <laughs> it could matter if you are the only mother left. Oh god. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, of course. If we were to want them dead. Since we're just throwing that around willy nilly. So, it is of importance what you think to us, to me. <sighs> to us. You resent us, do you not? We do not give you very warm welcome. I do not resent you for that. I resent you for the treatment of our friend Hekka. As you should. As we do. <laughs> then I bring you proposal. I think that this idea of mine, it uh, is good for all of us. Makes uh, everybody happy. What's the idea? Tomorrow, the plan is to have you all executed. But before this happens, I let you go. Sounds like a good plan. You have to do favor for me. For me to let you go. If it is taking your daughter with us, I would rather die. Uh, professor, please give us your favor. You must take my daughter with you. Just kill me now. <laughs> <coughs> okay, let's say we bring your daughter with us. Where do we bring her after that? Away. As far away from Narashik as possible. We do understand that your daughter won't be safe with us. Why do you, you also say that? understand that the moment we cut her loose, she is going to die within the week because she's going to say the wrong thing to the wrong person. You say she will she is not safe outside. No. No. I just say that we are in no right to tell her what to do. Wait, no, I I'm absolutely saying she's not safe outside. And it has nothing to do with her tiefling heritage. It has to do with her upbringing and her attitude. Tiefling. The devil bit. I see. Nobody cares about that out there. I do not ask that you guard Leshkri. I do not ask that you keep Leshkri safe. You do not have to teach her anything. You do not have to take her uh, somewhere specific. You just take her far. Is Tekka coming with us? Is that part of the deal? Of course it is. I look at the others. That is why I say that this deal is good for everyone involved. And what about you and her father? You see her pause. She fills uh, the silence simply by eating quietly, thoughtfully. Until Miravesk looks back at you and says, I am the mother of more than one child. Not only do I give birth 
four children of my own, but this entire village is also everybody, my children. <coughs> I am heartbroken to let Leshkri go, but it is for her best and for everyone else's. It is out of love that I ask you to take her away from me. So I take it you do not believe in these omens of the priest? That if she were to leave, this whole place is flooded, everyone dies? I believe. Uh, I believe that she, if she is free, she tries to harm us. That is why you have to take her away very far so that she cannot find her way back. So it gets all of us out. I think we should take that deal. You're placing a lot of trust in us. What is to stop us from simply being on the outside and then letting her do as she wishes to come back and to take revenge on the village that has sent us to death? I have waited 14 years for a chance to set my daughter free. I may not get a better one than this one. You are friends with one devil. I do not think you will harm another. Maybe you will take pity. I hope that you will take pity on her. I hope you will do what is best for her. And perhaps out of uh, kindness you will also do what is best for us do I know for sure you will help me? no but I pray and I hope and what if Leshkri does not let us take her far? are we to use force? you do what it takes you understand? Okay. I mean, I like her. She's logical. Brooke nods. I look at Pip. Pip shrugs. <laughs> Alright, how do we get out? Oh, wait. Since this has to be unanimous, what about the birds and the eggs? If you can guarantee those pipes in. <laughs> that wasn't the <a> joke. <laughs> Sorry, I was smiling <laughs> at my dice. You're smiling at your dice? Yes, I, so I rolled the something and I was like going, hmm, I did, I did roll. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been a lot clearer. I thought you were if just we were sharing an empathic moment with your inanimate objects. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, look at you. I, I... Resting on a 19 like a good dice. <laughs> just gazing at your children. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very in character for me, anyway. The lives of these fools come and go at your whim, dice. <laughs> you are more powerful than you know. My beautiful children. Oh my god. My demigods. Alright, how do we get out? Like... Uh, sorry, about uh, about the birds. Oh. <clears throat> um. The... <laughs> I completely lost... Sorry, I lost my spot in my... No, it's so good. All right, all right. Back in it, back in it. Got it, I got it. Uh, she says, Your animal friends, we are taking care of their situation. It raises an eyebrow. I believe you. I believe you. Pip leans forward. Eyebrow raised. Are you looking? Is he looking at Maravis? Skeptical. Yes. Okay. So, like, 
a short silence follows. Uh, she uh, she makes eye contact with him. Um, there's a bit more silence after that. Pip, roll an insight check. It feels like she is thinking of something she's not saying. Um, but once she finally does speak up again, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, once she finally speaks up again, Meravesk says, I am perplexed by the circumstances that take you to my village. But these birds are not to blame. We are searching the caves as we speak. Does this answer satisfy you? Hmm. Pip leans back, but he keeps an eyebrow raised. Crosses his arms. I do apologize for these circumstances. The other mothers will say that I am soft, that I do not punish wrongdoings the way they should be punished. But I see little, little reason behind the violence. You say you do not seek us out on purpose, and I believe you. They blame me. Last time a foreigner was here. It is because of me that he is let go. And now the other mothers say that it is my fault that you are here now. That by letting one of you go, then others have come and others after will come. I have... I can only ask for you to promise that you keep the location of my village secret. You do not share it with others. You do not bring others here. Of course. How come you let the other guy free? Ah, uh, Pontifex, you glance at eyebrows. you glance at Devamia, who like with her face stuffed with food. She says, "Oh, yeah, no, no problem." <laughs> hmm. Great. How come you let the other guy go as well? What was his reason for coming here? Or her? This man, he says he uh, searches for things, for places. He says he is driven by a curiosity. And I understand that. When I am a child, I also search. I leave my village, even when my uh, my mother says not to. I look at surface. I meet other people that are not like me. I understand that, that sense of uh, curiosity and wonder, but my people do not. And I am their mother, and I do have to appease them. Did you also have to sneak him out? With him, it is not necessary. I am more influential back then. It is first time that one man from outside has come here. So 
it is different. Now there are many, and you bring devil with you, and uh, despite now me being the older of the mothers, my voice carries less influence. Hmm. No, uh, that man, he is let go uh, freely, knowingly. The mothers agreed back then, though it took a lot of convincing. I even offered and helped with building a, a place for him to go through. That is how you, tonight, escape. You take same exit. I will... I show you where it is when we are ready. And there are none of these ashes to prevent the devils from leaving. My people place many, many magic to stop people from leaving. But if you leave through the exit that I have prepared, then you only have to worry about Circle outside my daughter's house. Good enough for me. Okay. What, of, uh, what of our little guard who has followed us around? I've grown quite fond of him. Nothing bad will happen to him, yes? It is best that he does not know what I do tonight. Of course, but uh, I figure if his charges were to escape, he would be punished, and it seems like the mothers are keen for strict punishment. I send Tarsha home. It is not his job anymore. Uh -huh. Then that is good enough for me. I don't care about anyone else here. I do feel bad for him. Tarsho is only person who um, grows close to Fen and learns his language. Fen is gone and Tarsho is does not do well. But I know that he gets over it one day soon. Tarsho is strong and we rely on him. He is only a man who can grow plants here. Now that Fen is gone, uh, we need Tarsho more than ever. Good. Then he is safe. Alright, I agree with is... this plan. Everyone else? Yeah, I think we have a deal. And Brooke reaches out his hand towards... I forgot her name. Maravesk. Maravesk, yeah. Uh, who does not really seem to know what you're doing. He just looks down at your hand. Oh. Where we come from, if you make a deal, you shake on it. Like, make it official. We shake hands? We shake hands. She reaches forward with her hand, but she's using her left. And she just awkwardly takes her hand. Good enough. I'll take your left hand. <laughs> hmm. I have... I do not do this before. And she lets go. As she uh, calmly goes back to eating, but there is this... Um, um, this woman has been uh, uh, somewhat just 
logical and methodical and not showing too much emotion. Um, you can feel that their movements have gotten just a little bit heavier and she seems to focus on her food a little bit uh, with a little bit more intensity before bringing her gaze back up at the rest of you. Uh, as she says, if I can help in other ways, if I can answer other questions, this is one and uh, only chance that we have. Do you want any way of communication with your daughter after she's gone? Or do you have any way to communicate with her? Or is she just gone? <coughs> then that's it. Do I desire to stay in touch? Yes, but it cannot be done. He needs to be far away from here. And I do not think that she wants to speak with me anyway. I have not been a good mother to her. I couldn't. Just saying, because it might change after tonight. But okay. Is there anything you want us to tell her? Or are you going to talk to her yourself? Consider is it. Perhaps... No. It is best that we do not speak again after this. I do have a question for you. Why are you all so afraid of the outside world, of integrating yourself back in with it? I don't understand. Not with us from Plorna, but your fellows from Ladaria, the other... The Yavelsi, the other Quelco Quel that are out and about, the Aitareva, all of them. Why do you seclude yourselves so aggressively? Laidat has uh, a long history. Let's... Uh, it uh, suffice to say, when we need help, it is not given to us. And so we learn to no longer rely on other people. Perhaps by now, this has become fear for a lot of us. But in the past, it, it was not out of fear. It, we shunned others. Right, well, the way I see it is there is a difference between relying or not relying and executing. Back when Just my people were fighting, needs work. back when my people were fighting dragons and devils, we all dragons were united, all together, fighting for one cause as one army. And so were devils as well, and we used to believe that people were the same that we were all on the same side. But we were not. The way my people were was treated, it, it was unfair. Many crimes were committed against us. We were used. We were good at fighting, and so that meant we were always on the front line. We were tricked. And when the dragons came for us, Nobody helped us. Nobody except for two dragons. They are all we need now. 
Everybody else, I... I disagree with it. I enjoy seeing what is outside. I enjoy interacting with those who are on the surface. But I also respect the wishes of my people. They see things differently. Well, it seemed as if nothing is going to change here because no one wishes it to change, so... Why not leave with us? Your daughter would be much more safe with someone as rational as you beside her. Less likely to get decapitated for insolence. You could see the outside world. You could learn so much more. <laughs> you ask me to come with you. As you said, you might not have another chance or at least another motivation. The other mothers seem to be uh, the majority and also disagree with most of what you believe in, so whatever power you have is on the surface at most. Whatever obligations you feel, whatever decisions you think you're needed to make, you would simply be overruled. Sounds like these two mothers know what they want to do with this place, and it sounds like everyone who lives here knows what they want to do here, and that you are the outlier. Honestly, it is a little crass, but it seems as if you might be more of a burden to these people and their way of life. And there's a world out there that welcomes and needs people like you. <laughs> and perhaps you could uh, teach your daughter correctly, rather than the world breaking her into what she needs to be. I know what it is like to grow up without parents. It is harsh. The world is a difficult place. It also definitely helps to have someone guide you while growing up. So her having a mother <coughs> would probably be very helpful. And she go with us. We won't have to force her to come with us. I don't wish to harm anyone that doesn't need to be. Plus, we happen to know of a way to get very far from here. Uh, farther than you can imagine. Uh, in a significantly less amount of time. Pontifex. Roll a persuasion check. Um, do it with advantage because Brooke also chimed in. Okay. Uh, let me roll. Uh, Ooh. It takes those. Good chip, Brooke. Thank you, thank you. Said one sentence. I'm glad I can. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> is shaking her head for most of this. Uh, she has a bit of a smile, like like she's listening to just something silly. But she doesn't seem to have a reply, not right away. You can kind of tell that despite of the uh, what she's expressing, uh, she seems to be thinking about it. She speaks up uh, uh, at some point uh, quickly as if immediately voicing whatever thought just went through her mind, and she says, I have more than one child. I love Leshkri, but I also love Ilrigan, Astarak, and Vakta. And I love everyone else. I am the mother of this village. I cannot abandon all of my children. I am terrible mother to Leshkri. I can't also be terrible mother to everybody else. It is 
Same thing. I always want to see the world, but I live here. Allow me to throw a few more terms in here, and you can keep your response to yourself and decide when we leave, but... Based on your own words, everyone here, including your other three, have two other mothers, not just you. And it seems that Leshkri is the only one in this village with only one, and is also the one in the village whose only mother she believes does not care about her. Of all the people in the village, they have others. They do not need you. Leshkri is the only one who needs you. You would not be abandoning these people here. You would be... Eh, it is a form of triage, we will say. Only one person in this village needs you, truly. And, while my friends and I have other places to be, I happen to know a lovely pair who has a lovely pet, who I'm sure would be more than ecstatic to have you around that could teach you more of the outside world. They would likely enjoy having your company for a bit. They even speak your language. It's just food for thought. Of all the people to abandon, I believe Leshkri is the wrong decision. But, you know, that is uh, for another time. That is your decision at the end of the day, and I'm sure that Leshkri will understand either way, right? Miravesk remains silent. So, when do we leave? <laughs> <sighs> I will meet you in three hours. Will you, uh, you be ready by then? Yeah. Just have to let Tekka know. I'm sure that Tekka will be happy to hear that Leshkri is leaving with us. Perhaps she will find some solace in having one similar to her around. You mean an accomplice in destroying the world? I just mean another tiefling. Huh. Perhaps one that can show her the good sides of being a tiefling. <laughs> Maybe he can teach her the punching kick or whatever it is that he does. Pogo stick. <laughs> Maybe he can teach her poetry. He would probably try. Depends on her if she would actually... Listen, which is unlikely, but whatever. Hmm. You never know. Different players, people change. Sometimes. But all right, three hours. We should let Tekka know. You'll meet us at the house, I assume. Yes. I... I come here to get you. Right. You do not leave this place until I return. You do not raise suspicions. On that note, it is probably safe for us to not tell Leshkri about what is happening until it is happening. I don't want to give her any time to think of a plan to escape. Or to cause a fuss and get more attention than we need. Great. We will tell her when we tell Tekka. Then be ready. Well, no. Well, Pontifex, no suspicion, right? 
want to continue the game of Dragon Chess in the meantime? He's already pulling out the board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miravisk stands up and uh, leaves. Hmm. Well done. Not gonna lie, I did not see that coming. At some point during the during the dragon chess game, a uh, pip, feel a tug on your scarf. Mm -hmm. Pip looks around. Um, now, as for the adventures of Squeak. <laughs> um, I need Squeak to roll a survival check. All right. And an investigation check, just separately. Oh, okay. All right. Survival first. Okay. And investigation second. <laughs> what is Squeak's passive perception? Eleven. Okay. So, uh, Squeak has poked around. Uh, first on the vi in the village on the way to uh, the the tunnel that you guys had eyed. Uh, in and around that area. Um, when he got... When he got closer to the exit that Orm had pointed out to you, um, he could tell, even from a short distance, that he could not approach. That, that getting any closer would have harmed him. Um, there is... Uh, as far as he can tell, there is... Uh, a uh, there is something keeping him from leaving that is even more powerful, more concentrated uh, than the the ashes that he has already encountered earlier. Hmm. Um, he has tried to fly up through the the holes at the top of the cave um, where you guys will not be able to go without flight uh, but he went to take a look and he discovered the same thing um, and while he may not be particularly worried because he can you can poof him in and, in and out of existence um, he reports this, uh, knowing that this could affect the Tekka's uh, escape. Um, and as he kept poking around invisibly, uh, looking for perhaps something else, um, he noticed that uh, uh, Kalvik, the priest, seemed to be following him. Uh oh. They even made eye contact couple of times and at least that's what he felt like at times he, he felt like he, he's a little uncertain he thinks he was being tracked in some manner or another but not being seen through his invisibility um so that's the that's the extent of his report now, Squeak didn't sense any sort of ward over the entrance when we first came in, though, right? And it, it's just sort of in, like, these alternative exits? Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, so Squeak now reappearing at Pip's shoulder... Uh, and they share a telepathic conversation as Squeak reveals everything that he's seen. Uh, 
Hip looks over to the others, just gives uh, gives Brooke a couple of quick tugs on his shirt. He leans down. What's up? Uh, you feel an invisible presence sort of lean against uh, against your cheek as you lean down, and you hear a little raspy whisper. Listen, Brooke. There are wards all around this place. Back exit, top exit, doesn't matter. They're all, they're all guarding against people like me, people like Tekka. I'll lean over to Pontifex. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You hear a thud. (laughs) He stops. Shit. Squeak crawls back up. One more thing. That priest? That priest had his, uh, has his eyes on me the whole time. I was invisible. I think he can sense something's up. Huh. Okay, now you can lean. I'm, I'm safe. I'll finish leaning over to Pontifex. And also whisper a bit. So... Ah, uh, Squeak just told me that apparently all exits, except for the one we went through, or came in awarded against his kind. <coughs> so unless... Unless... Uh, Maravesk knows about that. Oh. Escaping with Tekker and Leshkri might be a bit difficult. Then we will simply let her know. And then she either knows a way to get around, through, or remove the ward, or she perhaps knows another path. Okay. Well... But if she knows that there is warding, if it was put up by the priest or something, then maybe she can adjust. Okay. Um... And if necessary... I believe Pip is capable of removing some semblance of magic. Maybe he can work it then. Squeak also confirmed our suspicion on the priest. Well, more or less confirmed <coughs> our suspicion on the priest potentially knowing about Squeak. Mm. Or at least being able to sense him. He felt like he was followed. So, we have to be careful tonight. Well, in any case, we are leaving in three hours. And hopefully the priest leaves well enough alone and no deaths have to happen. I hope. I hope for them. (laughs) Short of this whole village militizing, I believe we can handle it just fine. We took down that dragon like four times. So the priest is slightly worrying. Gonna be honest, I don't really want to fight some, so let's try to keep that as our last resort. Sure. And in the case we should tell Tekka about this, I think he can keep it to himself from Leshkri, so I can just do my mind thing again. Okay. So everyone rest until, and then we wait till we get taken by Miravesk. Did Miravesk say to wait up on this platform where we ate, or to wait yeah. at the house with Tekka and Leshkri? So she, she said to wait in your house that you're in right now. And not leave, or make mm-hmm. any suspicion. Um, any preparations that I should know of? I forgot, didn't I roll last time for the short rest and healing? Yeah, Some you, are, you are yeah, I know short I rested, you are healed. Okay, because maybe it was after the save? Because my HP are not adjusted. 
Um, it was after the dragon. I don't think anything happened to this because you guys rested while Pontifex tried a, a number of combinations for an indeterminate amount of time. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to, you should have spent all your hit dice to full heal. I don't think I spent all of them. Mm, Can I spend some well. right now? Just to heal up fully? Aren't you already up at full? I didn't put it into my uh, into my D and D Beyond cheat, so at least the rolled, so I have to roll again. I don't remember how much I healed last time or how many I used. Ah, oh, I remember having this conversation last session too, and like you said, yeah, but it was after. Yeah, it was after, and I didn't add the hit points, so I'll just roll again. Okay, yeah. I mean, you have three hours, which is like three short rests. Coolio. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. Ah, uh, you wait. Normally, at this hour, you'd be going to sleep and you are, you are actually quite tired. You fought an undead dragon today, but a lot of animals before then. Um, you've been walking around for the rest of the day, prisoners in this uh, enormous uh, uh, jail with no bars, separated from one of your friends, separated uh, also from your mounds uh, and from Freda. You don't go to sleep. There would be no point. You need to be ready. And plus, you're a little too nervous to really sleep. Pekka, back at the building on your own. Um, there is only... There is only one bed. Um, but plenty of couches. And uh, for your own rest, you eventually find a spot. Um... Leshkri leaves you alone for, for the rest of the night. Um, she eventually retreats to what what must be her own bedroom, and uh, she locks the door. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know about the decision that the mothers must have come to yet. You don't know if uh, your companions are going to leave. Uh, your fate seems... So far, to just be, to just stay here with Leshkri, just two devils trapped until they die of old age. But you know your companions well enough to know that they're not going to just leave things as they are. And uh, unable to leave, all you can do is just put your faith in them and wait for the morning. The torches across uh, uh, the village of Narajgar slowly put out one by one, and uh, the sparkling village begins uh, to become darker and darker until there's very few lights left, and uh, even the even the stars above uh, don't reach you. As the sky is still clouded and. Uh, Rain is still pouring. The only sound uh, this uh, late into the night is that of the raindrops. It's weird that this rain is directional. There's only some spots in the village where the rain is actually falling. It feels a little alien, like a lot of things here. And as time passes, when Meravesk shows up again, you're pretty sure it hasn't been three hours yet. 
She looks like she's in a hurry. The first thing you notice of her is, uh, ah. She does not look good. Her cheeks are wet with tears and her eyes are a little puffy. She has a backpack with her. She kind of, rather than opening the door and calling for you, she slams it open. And she says, quickly, we leave now. Uh, okay. This is good. You follow me. Quickly gets to his now. Feet. Jump straight up. It's already on. Ah, uh, leaving the small house that you have been uh, uh, locked into. There are no guards on this bridge. No guards on the next platform, and you can't really see any further. Um, well, uh, those of you can see in the dark, uh, um, you just see up to a certain radius, uh, in, in black and white. Uh, um, do remind me, I believe it's Brooke that cannot? I cannot. The Spontify? Uh, it's it's Brooke and Pontifex, vision. right. Yeah, I don't have dark vision either. Um, and so... As uh, yep, okay, sorry, just checking something. Uh, as Maravesca le leads you down these bridges, uh, she seems to be moving entirely uh, by memory to know exactly where she needs to go, despite the fact that um, it's near impossible to actually see. Uh, she's quick on her feet and uh, very much uh, just set and determined on what she's doing right now. The village is quiet and the lack of guards feels suspicious. Ah, it does not feel natural. Ah, is there anything you want to do while you follow her? Any preparations? Okay. Just interrupt uh, me whenever there's something you want to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess actually can uh, while we're walking, uh, because I don't know how long this takes, can Pontifex start ritual casting detect magic and just kind of keep that rolling? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he'll do that, just to in case there's anything unexpected. Um, Pip. Um, is Squeak with you? Yes. Okay. Click. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Maravesk eventually leads you uh, to the large platform beneath the the, uh, the enormous glowing floating crystal, and she looks up at it. Uh, her own box glisten in the light of this floating gemstone, and you can um, you can see her eyes also glistening as she stares, and then she dries her eyes, and uh, she begins to lead you down the bridge. Uh, until eventually you reach the lower, uh, the most... Whoops, words, until you reach the lowest part of the village and she takes a sharp turn to the right <coughs> and says, quickly, quickly. Uh, and you are before the building that Tekka and Leshkri are in. Yeah, I guess once we enter, Pontifex is, is trying to concentrate on the spell, but he sees he's just going to keep it short and sweet with the We're leaving. All of us. Oh, wait, uh, run it with me one more time. What, I, what, what did you say you're doing? Uh, Pontifex just says out loud, we are leaving all of us. To, to who? Uh, is this not to the house where Tekka and Lushkri are? 
Yeah, you're in front of it. Oh, okay. I thought we went, we entered. Okay. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. Um, they, they, you know, there's a there's a squeak situation before you can get in. Oh, yeah. oh I see. Uh, you are you are, you are, you are like outside the, of the circle. Going to break the ashes, of course, to get Lash Green Tech out, right? Yeah. Will this alert the priest? Pretty sure he's already alerted if she's in that much of a hurry. We must be quick. All right. Fine. I'll kick away the ashes. Brooke. Am I dead? <laughs> it's just really simple. You disperse the ashes with your boots. You make a large enough passageway, uh, breaking the circle. Um, a few feet wide, so that uh, Tekka and Leshkri may walk through it uh, uh, with ease. And you take very good care to disperse them as much as possible. Not really sure whether they could step maybe on uh, just the slightest amount of them, whether it would hurt them. Uh, you want to make sure that it's taken care of. I'll stay a bit behind to mirror with and say, there is a chance that at other exits there are also these kind of barriers. Do you know about anything like that? Are we prepared for that? Everything is protected, but we do not go where the protections are. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, I am certain. Nobody knows of okay. it. Okay. So not sorry. Um, <clears throat> you open the door. Uh, Tekka, you were sleeping in the living room, probably, like right here at the entrance. Mm hmm. Uh, so the, the door is slammed open. And you, you awaken to that. <laughs> Who? Who is there? Show yourself. Do any of you walk in? <laughs> oh, I was... I, I didn't know if I was first there at the door as well, since I was standing behind. <laughs> sure, I think the effects will come through and deliver that line. We're <laughs> leaving now. All of us. Wonderful the delivery. ring Thank is you. broken. <laughs> Good. Uh, Lashka should be there. Hold on. Uh, yeah, Tekka will gather his things and then knock on the door. Rushgrave, we are leaving. Uh, leave me alone. Wake up, now. Uh, her voice, the next time she speaks, sounds a little bit closer, like she's on the other side of the, of the door. Uh, Becca! Middle of the night. This is important. It's what you want. We can leave. If this is a stupid joke... When I'm have going... I joked? This is not the time. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> ah, she opens the door. She, she, she looks just dead tired. Slowly blinks at you. Slips Here. out from the, the bedroom. Take a hands out of the water skin. Get your most important things. We go now. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, couple of things. And she begins to just run around in her bedroom. Um, she, she, she gathers some belongings and she looks like she doesn't have anywhere to actually put them. Um, and she says, Ah, uh, Tekka, do you, can I borrow your backpack? Just put some stuff in. Fine, fine. Here. Uh, yeah. T well, take a hand for the bag. Uh, he will also turn around to Pontifex. So where are we going? What? What is the plan?
Antifacts. Oh no. Uh oh. Did, did we lose Matt? Mm. Oh. I believe he shall return. Hello? Hey! There you are. Internet pooped. Oh no. Okay, hey. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry if I missed anything. You're good. I don't think anything major happened. Okay. Just that guy just asking you, or is it what's the plan? And like told her to wake up and we're leaving, and then I was gone. Yeah, that, uh, that, okay. nothing much happened. It just, uh, Tekka said, Pontifex, where are we going? What is the plan? Uh, we are following her mother. She's taking us out now. The council decided to kill us. She disagrees. So we are leaving and taking Leskri with us. She might have issues with this but she won't pull her out here Leskri are you done mm. so how uh, uh, how much of a rush are we in we are oh. running out of time well it's just like if I'm if I'm going to flood flood this entire village, then all my books are gonna get ruined. Bring two books. Two. Two books, and Ugh. we go. It's terrible. You're terrible. Hip's gonna send an invisible squeak up in the air to be an aerial lookout, make sure nobody's coming. Ooh, okay. It's quick to roll a perception check, then. Okay. Fine, then. <laughs> Fine, then. I'll do as you say. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> reroll, reroll. <laughs> reroll. I only have two inspirations. Then take mine. Fine, I'll use one. <laughs> oh, Dennis. I'll use one. I don't want to die. <laughs> How's that? It's uh, is it a ten? Nine? Okay, ten. Yoink. <gasps> I die now. Better than a one. This it is. Cool. Uh, so Squeak is surveying the area from a distance. Um, the one thing of note that he notices while the others are inside is that there is a far away building in the village where the lights turn on. Uh, that's all he sees for the time being. Uh, back inside, Miravesk. Uh, Tekka, there is a woman, a Kralko woman with the party that uh, uh, you have never seen before. Um, and she eventually makes her way towards uh, the, the bedroom. Gently slips past you. Um, and Hesitates for a moment, but then walks in. Um, you see Leshkri uh, interrupt what she's doing, drop the books that she was uh, evaluating whether to take with her or not. Uh, and Leshkri looks a little panicked for a moment. Uh, and then the two of them begin to speak, and uh, uh, you're not sure what the exchange is about, but you can see that Leshkri at first seems confused. Then she looks angry. And she seems... Confused again. Um, the the woman, on the other hand, seems, uh, despite looking uh, both tired and also like she has just been crying, um, she otherwise speaks with this uh, uh, very, um, very emotionless kind of way. Uh, appears to be very direct in whatever she is saying, um, and to be reacting a lot less emotionally than uh, uh, than Leshkri. Uh, 
and eventually the, the woman hands her uh, the backpack that she was wearing over her shoulders and Leshkri slowly takes it. Uh, and then the woman helps her pack her things. With her assistance, uh, uh, this takes less time than it seems like Leshkri would have taken. Um, when uh, the uh, when a tiefling emerges from from the bedroom, she looks at the rest of the group and uh, after a moment, she says, "What is actually going on?" We are leaving. leaving. Is it, the moment you have been waiting for, is it not? It's just... Not the way I thought. I didn't think Mama would be coming. But what about Dad? Is... Is Dad leaving? Arvesk. Shakes her head. But, uh, I don't get it. You hate me, he doesn't. Mervesk says... He... Chooses... Not to leave. Somebody needs... To stay... With your siblings. But I... I... I don't want to be with you. You've never given a shit about me. Nervous. At first seems to choose to not even reply to that. Um, she glances briefly at your group before speaking up as she says. Whether... Uh, whether you want... I am coming with you. It does not matter what you think of it. Yeah, right, I know. You never care about what I think about anything. Well, you know what? Um, good decision. It, it's good that you're leaving because... Because if you don't, then you would die here with everybody else. So you get to live a little bit longer. Until I kill it with my own hands later. And Leshkri marches out of the building. <clears throat> uh, leaving the rest of you with uh, with Miravesk. Um The Bamiya seems just be like awkwardly pretending not to be hearing the exchange. Well, let's get out of here. Yes. You will get your time to talk to her. She will come around. We leave. Let's go. Miravesk leads you out of the building. Um, out, back outside. Uh, um, Squeak has noticed uh, a couple more lights in two other buildings. Are turning on and uh, some people beginning to walk out and then okay. they step onto the bridges and they are um, out of their own sources of light and beyond the uh, squeak's own uh, uh, dark vision but it's clear that there is some kind of movement going on uh, in that case squeak will quickly fly down and update the others we have movement about to have company soon. Okay, let's hurry up. I take out my sword while we go. Yeah, and so I've already got my weapons, quote unquote, out because I'm ritual casting. <laughs> okay. Ah, you step back out. 
you see uh, Leshkri standing before the circle of ashes and powdered uh, diamond dust. She cautiously moves a hand towards the spot above where the circle used to be, where uh, Brooke has kicked it away. And then moves forward slowly and slowly until she is on the other side. Then turns back to look at the circle, to look at the house. First, kind of uh, visibly incredulous that she just left it. And then she begins to laugh. So, where do we go? Miravesk um, points, point, uh, points to the right and says, you follow me this way. Um, the direction that she takes you towards uh, is actually... Uh, uh, it's pretty much where you came from originally, but you don't go all the way back to the entrance... Uh, of uh, the, the cave you came out of. Um, she stops before then. Um, Leshkri is laughing the entire time. After the first burst of laughter, she keeps it down. It's more of a chuckle. Um, and it's, it's, strange, it's a strange laugh. Uh, there is some emotion to it that it, it's not quite as simple to decipher. She does seem happy, but something is off. And her happiness has this this tinge of malice in her voice. Uh, you know the plans that she has for this village and feels like she's thinking about them. Uh, Tekka, you two were able to step out of the circle just fine and uh, it is your first time actually setting foot in, in the village of uh, <clears throat> of Narashk and actually not being uh, trapped behind some magic that has been specifically crafted to keep your people out. Uh, but you're still not free to go where you want. You still have to go where you're told to go. Um, and with you having barely seen any of this village... Uh, you follow the mother to the promised uh, escape route. Um, on the way, Lash uh, Leshkri is going to uh, approach Pip, and uh, her chuckling quiets down for a moment, uh, and uh, she says, Is he with you? Yeah. Is he here? Why? Um, because I want to speak to him. Uh, okay. Uh, s there's a sort of shimmer in the air on Pip's shoulder as, uh, Squeak appears. <laughs> um. And then she pauses for a moment. Uh, um, her... Her pace, as she's keeping up with everyone, uh, slows down for a moment before she uh, resumes keeping up with everybody. Um, and there is a bit of obvious awkwardness to her. Um, almost like she doesn't really want to be doing this, but then um, she just says, I apologize for offending you yesterday. Okay. Do, do, do you accept? Uh, sure. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, that's everything. I shouldn't have called you short, and you have my utmost respect, Squeakash the Rocks. Wait, what? Where's all this coming from? Is that okay? 
Just d uh, don't tell your dad I mistreated you. I didn't mean it. Uh, okay. I won't tell my dad. Awesome. Thank you. Uh-huh. You just watch your step. Because he's only one call away. <laughs> <laughs> and this time, she does seem worried. Yeah, that's right. I got the senior on speed dial. <laughs> Perfect. I, I don't know what that is. You don't want to know. <laughs> no, no, I don't. It's fine. Um, Miravesk has stopped um, in what would roughly be this location. Um... It's behind the large crystal hill that the, the building you stayed in has been built on. Uh, she's facing towards the wall. Um, instead of continuing to run down the road, she has stopped here. Um, and she's looking at the wall and she's holding up a hand to it. And she's touching it and applying pressure in certain spots. Where nothing seems to happen at first. Uh, she eventually finds uh, a, a particular spot that uh, uh, gives in under her touch and presses on what seemed to be just a camouflaged button of sorts. And part of the wall begins uh, to fold away inward, revealing a small passageway. No, um, no bigger than perhaps 20 or 30 feet uh, long and across. Uh, but there is something... Uh, in in there, in this sort of hidden room uh, that she has, has just opened up for everybody. There is a single door. It's not up against the wall. It's just a door in the middle of the room that seemingly wow. doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Huh. Uh, she <laughs> gestures <laughs> forward and says, this is where we live. Go inside, now. Is, right. is this? Huh? Is my See magic him? picking up anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the door frame ahead of you is very magical. Okay, just the door frame. Mm hmm okay. Seems safe enough. And he'll go. Uh, you step into the room, you approach the uh, the entranceway. The Vamya seems utterly confused, and uh, uh, so is uh, Leshkri, but Miravesk seems to know what's going on, and uh, so does your group. Um, so without much of an explanation for, for uh, the others who are out of the loop, uh, Pontifex, you approach the doorframe and you Put a hand on the handle of the door. Um, there is nothing around it. And the door doesn't seem to lead anywhere, but you know how this works. And you push the door open. And on the other side, through the entranceway, you just see the back of the room that you are in. We pause for a moment. And then you hear Miravesk's voice behind you saying, No. No, 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 it should... It, it needs to go... This is not how it works. You make it work. This is my surprised face. <laughs> you make it work, right? You know how you make it work. Can I walk through the door? Ah, uh, yeah, Brooke, you walk through the... Uh, you walk through the entranceway and uh, uh, you don't really end up anywhere. You're just walking through it. It looks back to the entranceway where they first came in. Is there anyone there? Um... As if acting on 
a sort of sixth sense, you turn back uh, through the passageway the Miravesque has just opened up um, at a fair distance away from you. You do make eye contact with uh, Kauvik, the priest. And that's where we'll end the session. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, my Hey <laughs> We gonna get fireballs. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Luckily I have a single spell slot and it's for fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to commend you on you guys bringing Maravesk with you. That I did not see that coming. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Good job. I think it's more interesting. Yeah. And that means we don't have to babysit our kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it solves a lot of problems. <laughs> when we <laughs> Just like trying to approach it, because like the more we talked with this lady, it's like okay, like she she thinks logically and like she thinks for herself. She's not very democratic, to be frank. So okay, like not let's go about this for the ways that make sense. How about you don't abandon? Your Was not. And how about you do abandon the town that doesn't give a shit about you? It is just the first time in the entire campaign where Pontifex has gotten a woman to listen to him. <laughs> Was not it expecting potential Jamuel door. I think I've made a breakthrough with women. <laughs> I'm starting to understand. Yeah. yeah, you just tell them to do what they want. <laughs> Who would Whatever you want, dear. Always went the opposite way. So yes, I know you want to do A, but have you considered B? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out they don't like that. I appreciate that. Uh, um, I appreciate you being here for the session, despite uh, many of you still feeling sick. Uh, next week is going to be the eleventh. Um, I and won't be able to make that. You will not. Oh, <coughs> I'm at a concert. Mm -hmm. The one after that, the 18. I'm here. Yeah, because it is closer to Christmas, <coughs> so I'm just like checking. If yep, people I'll be good for the 18th. Understand. Obviously, won't be good for the 25th. Of course. Yeah. We're not playing on the, on the 25th. <laughs> the Christmas episode. <laughs> Oh um, look! It that's when we yeah, finally, be able to make so we've all been waiting for. That's when we finally remove curse on the snow globe. <laughs> we finally get to see Pontifex and Tekka wearing bikinis. That's what the <laughs> fan base has been asking for. <laughs> okay, so we'll play. Episode. We'll play on the 18, and we might find another day during the week to uh, make up for the 11th. Um, so there will be more to be talked about in Discord. In the meanwhile, you guys just take care of yourselves, rest up, heal up, uh, and I will be seeing you again soon. Nice. Bye, Alrighty. friends. Bye. 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 Bye.